Hello, my name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to learn how to create subgroups, or you can also call them bins, of a data set. Now, one of the advantages of making subgroups is that it it's a way to create categorical data, which can be used for further additional testing, for example, for those of you who are more familiar with statistical analysis like ANOVA, t-test, etc. Um, sometimes you don't want to take your continuous data, but you want to put it into different groups like I just mentioned. And so we're going to learn how to do that in R. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the iris data set. And I'm going to show you how with the help of the cut function, you can nicely and neatly cut your uh, data into different size groups, if you will. Now, in order to do this, this is what you need to do. Um, first, of course, you want to save whatever you're doing inside some sort of an object. That way you can use it later on. So I'm going to call my object example, like so here. And after I set that up, I need to use what we call the cut function. That's what we're going to use. And inside the cut function, you have to put at least two pieces of information. You must put the, the actual data you want to use, and you must tell the cut function how many groups you want to divide your data into. So we're going to use the iris data set and we're going to use sepal.length. So that's what we're going to use. Remember the, the to the left of the dollar sign is the name of the data frame and to the right of the dollar sign is the actual column or variable that you want to use from that data set. After you access this, you put a comma and then you put the number of groups. For now, we're going to use three. Of course, nothing happened. You can't see anything yet. You have to type example to see it. And so you can see here, we get this stuff that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but basically here's what's happening. Example number one was put inside the group that is 4.3 to 5.5 in length. That's basically what's happening there. Example two, same thing, example three, et cetera. Um, if you go down here to the bottom, you can see that example 150 was put in the group 5.5 to 6.7. You know, probably this is probably centimeters, I believe, in length. And so at the very, very bottom, R tells you uh, what the levels are. So we have three levels here. One that goes from 4.3 to 5.5, from 5.5 to 6.7, and from 6.7 to 7.9. That is our three groups. Now, if you want to get a count of how many rows or how many examples are in each group, you'd use the table function. Inside the table function, you put the name of the object you just created, which for us is called example. And so you can see right here, I have 59 in group 1, 71 in group 2, and 20 in group 3. So you can see that R doesn't necessarily uh, divide them evenly. It's kind of based more on a histogram pattern where you know in the middle is the most and off to the left and to the right are smaller values. That's how they kind of do it. Now, the problem with this for many people is that you know this ideal 4.3 to 5.5, it, it doesn't have any meaning to a to typical person. So we can actually give our columns what we call labels. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. So this is the original code that we use to make our example objects. Now, if I put something after the, the three, if I put a comment there, I can now put an argument called labels, like so. And you can see right here, it gives me the equal sign. I use the concatenate function, and this is what I want. I'm going to, I'm going to give each of my three groups a different name. So we're gonna call the smallest group small, the next group, we're going to call it medium. And the last group, we're going to call it large, like so. All right. Now, if I use my table example again, or I'm sorry, if I look at example again, you can see now, instead of getting those ranges, I get names now. So the first row is small. Next row is small, small, small. So every time, basically what happened was this. Every time there was a 4.3 to 5.5, it was now replaced with a small. Every time there was a 5.5 to 6.7, it was replaced with a medium. And every time there was a 6.7 to a 7.9, it was replaced with a large. This gives these qualitative variables, if you will, a quality, something that people can relate to as they analyze your data or as they look at your data with you. And so again, if I use a table function, I get the same information, but instead of the numbers, I get the names are the labels that I gave to each group in my subgroups that I created. So this is the power of the cut function in that it allows you to create these different groups. So in this video, we learned about the benefits of using the cut function to make subgroups. 
This is an excellent way to prepare your data for some further analysis or to give some sort of a description to data that you're already done analyzing. Uh, in order to do this, you must keep in mind the, the data that you want to use and the column you want to use as well as how many groups you want to use. Um, sometimes you also want to give it a label as I showed you just previously in this example and this often helps with interpretation for people to appreciate your analysis. So thank you very much for listening and we hope to see you in our next video. Take care.